The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Yeah, I was just going to say, so it was bullying prevalent in those days. It, it, it's not just an excuse, but it was bad. Yeah. And it's uh, the psychological, the physical factor was literally can't even do up your pants. So, literally, without any prompting, any pushing, uh, part of what the title of the book is, no one, no one pushed me into the weight room. No one pushed me out in, on, uh, onto the street where I started running. And I, I started up a dual program of lifting weights mm -hmm. and, and running. I, I'm... I would, I'll classify myself as a horrible runner, but I ran. So you just started doing this on your own? Yes. Like your parents didn't say, go get some exercise, go overweight? Farthest thing from it. Farthest thing from it. Nobody parents, pushed you, you no. pushed yourself. My parents were immigrant parents, uh, came here from Italy. My dad literally worked in a factory. That's where I ended up working. I saw, I saw manual labor and I participated in manual labor that transformed my body, transformed my mind. But the lifting is what got me into that situation. My high school job was uh, probably the turning point of my life. But the lifting part of it, my parents were the, the last thing on earth that they believed in was athletics. So how old were you again when you started running? Uh, 12 years old. 12, At 12 years old, I started running around the block. I could barely get around the block. And at the public library, I. It, it, this is very ironic. Today we're living in an information age. You can find out anything that you want about sure. lifting, athletics, and so on. In, in 1969, at a public library, everything I needed to know to this day, I operate on the 90-10 rule. 90% of what I do today in the weight room, 90% of everything I believe in, my core values of lifting and, and staying in shape, I learned it at the public library. It's, it was all there then. Uh, this is not an offense to the fitness industry, but a lot, the fitness industry sometimes tends to think that we just invented everything now. We're far from it. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from nutrition, you know, protein every three hours, compound exercises. I basically do the same movements today as what I did when you were 12. When I did when I was 12. So it hasn't changed. Were you lifting when you were 12? When I was 12 years old, I started with a chin-up bar, I bought a bench, I started doing bench press, and I literally started with a bar only without weights doing squats. I read about squats and bench press and all those compound exercises and I, I, I live by the word reps. Mm -hmm. I just started doing reps and repetition and I read about you know form and, and, and the speed of the movement, no momentum, controlling the movement. By the time I was 16 I was a four-year veteran and I was working in a factory carrying 140 pound bags eight hours a day. In those four years... Bags of what? Flour? Uh, four, bags of flour that was it, was, it was a form of manual labor that has to be experienced to be believed. Eight hours a day, three people in a boxcar. Uh, now, as summer students, we did that, no pun intended, the heavy lifting. Yeah. Because during the year, we would work maybe Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday. But it was eight hours a day, 3,500 bags had to be carried and deposited between the three of us. So that's 1,200 repetitions of lifting. And, and literally, I became... I became, I'll use the word obsessed, I, I was so obsessed with form, I would do my squats in there, I would do the shoulder presses, I invented my way of, uh, of using bag workouts to develop a core strength and leg strength. I, I do it today uh, on a football field, that, that's my off-season training, for, uh, uh, is the bag work. So wait, hold on a second, how long did it take you to see results from when you were, you know, 12 years old? From 12 years old, I can honestly say it took me about a year and a half to start seeing a drop of, of fat. My first six months, I saw a difference, but it, it, this doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. By the time I started high school, I would say I went from being a horrendous little league football player. Uh, my first year in high school, I was playing junior varsity and varsity first year. And the reason was, is because that was just the dawn of the age of uh, the connection between lifting weights and football is exactly like skating and hockey. Okay. Hold on. I want to just throw in some um, obesity statistics right sure. here. Um, CBC um, in 2012 reported that uh, they wrote an article that 31% of Canadian kids between the ages of 5 and 17 um, are obese. Um, that was like 1.6 million kids. Interestingly, um, kids in between the ages of 5 and 11, the boys were three times more likely than girls to be obese. So being a boy, I mean, why do you think boys today 
um, are more likely to be obese than girls. Now, I've never done empirical research on that subject, but that subject is very near and dear to me, not only mm -hmm. from my experience, but because of coaching football, I, I coach what I call second chance teams. I've never had the Goliath. I always coached the Davids. So I've coached at high school, collegiate, semi-pro, and anecdotally speaking, I can show you evidence of it's, it's growing, it's alarming, of people, uh, I would say just, I'll put it mild, mildly, the growing percentage of body fat. Mm -hmm. My own personal opinion is, is that it, it doesn't matter at what age. I don't care if you're a child or an adult. What happens with obesity is sedentary life. Mm, so when it becomes a habit. Yeah. See, when it becomes a habit of, of like, when sedentary life is a lifestyle, and there is absolutely no, almost down to zero physical activity, you're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. According to HealthyCanadians.ca, uh, obesity is linked to the overconsumption of sugary beverages, such as your fruit juices, your sodas, and your energy. What do you think exactly. of energy drinks? I, I never touch them, ever. Yeah, you're, you're very fortunate that you actually took control of your health, and at such a young age, I mean, your inner guidance must be very, very strong, because um, children who are obese actually tend to be obese uh, throughout until their adulthood, and it leads to major health problems like diabetes, cancer, obesity is now linked to cancer, right. uh, depression, low self-esteem, and of course being bullied. And, and, and what you said to my, I, I'm going to give you an example. If I can do it, anybody can do it. At the age of 12, I, I'll go back to my immigrant parents. I like to say I was purebred Italian, meaning we were a carved family. I was just going to ask you, we I mean, were why were you family. obese? What were you eating? Carbs. Okay, and carbs do what? They turn to sugar in the body, and what happens is the pancreas has to release insulin to push that out into the cells. And in, or, in order, ordinary English is like this. You're putting fuel in your body, you're not using it, it turns to waste. No pun intended. So, if I can do it, I honestly, I tell people, I had no direction. All I knew is that I read that carbs are fuel. Mm -hmm. They're fuel for activity. So if you're, it, it's a, it, the carb regulation is like putting gas in the car. If you're gonna put gas in the car, you're gonna burn it up, or eventually it's gonna overflow. You're gonna get saturated with it. So you're, how old are you now? I'm 55, 55 years old. So you've been lifting. 43 years, uninterrupted. Wow. Completely natural, not a steroid in my body. Not a performance enhancing drug. Uh, I've been lifting for 43 years. This past weekend, my daughter, my third daughter got married. I just took two days off for the first time in 18 months. It's, it's my lifestyle. Between running and working out, mm -hmm. it's almost every day of my life I where, do it. Where do you draw the line between an obsession and a passion? Well, and, you, I, and, I, and I read that. In I, your book. I understand. Yeah. I, I make no bones about it. Is that I don't I don't define obsession. I don't define passion. Here's what I define. If I don't do it, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to return back to obesity. I don't use it as an excuse, but it's genetic. I have I have genetics that are not going to. Uh, I'm not blessed. Let's put it this way. I fight fat every day. I have no. So you're still eating that. the carbs, the well, pasta. I, not really. I, I I eat carbs, but. Um, I don't deprive myself, but I, I eat sensibly. It's protein intake every three hours, and why I look at carbs, I look at carbs as being fuel for my next workout. That's, all, that's what I live for. Now, a lot of people would call that obsession, but here's what I call it. The alternative is going back to what, to what it came from, and that's not going to happen. It won't happen. Nice. I've made up my mind a long time ago. It's Fantastic. Gonna Gino, let's, we're going to continue more with Gino Caro working out on Health Matters. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Health Matters. If you're just joining us, we're talking about working out. I'm sitting with gym owner and weightlifter Gino Accaro. We're also giving away a copy of his book tonight called Soul of a Lifter. Give us a call in studio if you'd like a copy, 905-595-LIVE. Here's your poll question for tonight. When it comes to working out, what's your favorite activity? A, cardiovascular, B, weight training, or C, stretching? Let us know, rogerstv.com slash healthmatters. Gino, sir. Yes. When I was at your gym, um, I saw your muscles. Thank you. <laughs> and you have big guns. Thank you very much. <laughs> but you say in your book, and here's a quote in your book, that the question, how do you build your arms, has the same appeal to you as bee stings and viewing autopsies. And I'm reading that going, what? This man, he's 55, has amazing arms. And by the way, when I was in your gym, I wanted to play um, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor and start calling you like Rocky Balboa. Thank, thank so, you. so how do you build your arms for the guys out there? 
here's how you build your arms. You pick up a bar and you do curls. You do them as strictly as possible. I have got timer tonight to show you, but there's a strict way of doing them. And a lot of people, I've heard all of it, oh, these are beach muscles. That has nothing to do with football. Wrong. It has plenty to do with football. It has plenty to do with everything. It has to do with your bench press. See, bench press is very, very important for football. You pick up a bar, you do it right, email me, go to my website, I'll, I will tell you how to do curls right. I can, do, I can teach you in probably five minutes. And that's all you need to know. Number two, for triceps, the back of your arms, good old-fashioned dips. I have a dipping bar, a little, um, I have a post on Facebook. It is, it's, it's engineered in a way that will it'll build your, your, your triceps beyond your imagination. Closed grip push-ups. Mm -hmm. You don't need any machines. Now, closed grip bench press, phenomenal. Those four things, but, uh, bar barbell curls, dips, closed grip push-ups, closed grip bench press. Every once, not every once in a while. I also will throw one, you gotta do forearm work. For football, you need, you need those big, big forearms. And they gotta be lean and they have now, to be very, okay, very good. Now, okay, how important is posture and alignment in the gym? Because when exactly. I go to the gym, I mean, that's one of the things I'm looking at when I'm lifting and I don't want to build big guns like you. Maybe little pistols will be fine with me. But I saw yours though, but they are, they are really, uh, they're pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, they, so when I'm at the gym and I see like newbies who are there at the gym, I mean, their arms are so not aligned and their neck is going every which way and they're chatting and it's right. such a setup for injury. Right. It, uh, the, the issue of what you're saying, posture, alignment, uh, right from your stance mm -hmm. to how you control the bar, um, every single movement has a track. So just for example, curls, there is a track that your fist has to make in relationship with your shoulder. It's very simple. And do you do slow, like, so I do oh, slow yes, controlled pace. movements, and I actually, so I can feel my muscles. Exactly. I, I will never lie to people. Uh, I've heard, you know, two by two, or two seconds by two seconds. I don't count. I go by feel, and here's what feel means. There has to be zero momentum in anything you do. Squats, for example. Uh, I've lived my life doing squats for lower body. I, uh, it, it's huge for my sport. Squats are, um, they're, they're a paradox. They're great for you, but they will kill you if you don't do them right. Mm -hmm. And if you do not do them right, meaning with momentum, bench press with momentum, you're not only wasting the exercise, but you're going to hurt yourself. That's the paradox, it's a double-edged sword. So the control issue, the speed as you were talking about, uh, I will never ever say to you or anybody, oh, if, you know, let's do it one second up, one second down, two seconds up. No, it has to do with zero momentum and it has to do with recruitment of every fiber possible in that muscle that you're doing and you can feel it. See, I go by instinctive, uh, an instinctive principle of where you can feel that you are working that muscle. And how do you know that? Is that that muscle will fatigue. Yeah. In other words, if that muscle is not fatigued, in other words, you're not feeling anything, if you're not feeling anything, I hate to say it, but you're basically wasting 90% of your workout. Why? Here's a question for you. Every gym that I've been to, whatever country I've been to, in the free weight section, men moan. And they sound like bears. You never hear women lifting weights, moaning when they're lifting weights and then dropping the plates on the floor. I did a YouTube video that, that is... And I, I have to ask somebody. I call it smashing plates. I'm a gym owner. So what is up I with to, that? I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest with people with whether it's our members, my football players. I don't know what it is, but I thought it was back in the 60s. But it's carried on now, it's 2013, it won't go away. There's something about picking up a bar, I don't care what it is that you're doing, there's something that people think that if I smash it onto the ground, that somehow that's enhancing my progress. It's not. There's a, a positive movement, meaning the, it's like the lift off, but the lift down is just as important. So just as an example, you said curls. If I'm curling a weight like this, and I'm done, and I throw it down on the ground. Right. Number one, if I could throw it down on the ground and smash it on the ground, it means I had plenty of energy left. I did not go to failure. If I'm not going to failure, your body's got a miracle process called adaptation. You make it go to failure, it will repair better than it was before, and you'll have big guns, yeah. like you had when, I, when you came to the gym. Now, here's my point. If you're chucking this bar onto the ground, you're ending this thing. It's like doing, uh, instead of an eight-hour shift, you just did a four-hour yeah. shift. So you're ripping off the company, and the company is you. Number two, if you're throwing it all over the place, I'm telling you, you're going to hurt yourself. So it's just common sense. And people around you, you are a threat in the gym. You, <laughs> I, you know, I'm afraid to go up to these guys, I mean, I and, and, and ask them because they sound like grizzly bears in, in the free room. It's just like, it, it needs research. But here's my own... <laughs>
It's <laughs> my own anecdote. I have to like research. crank up my iTunes. I think it's something, um, there's, there's enough research that shows two thirds of people will conform to the thoughts and observations of others, whether they believe it or not. I think this thing is one of those customs and myths that are passed down from generation, but someone's got to break it. I tried with my YouTube, I'm on a campaign to break the smashing the plates. You can't just throw them onto the floor. And, and you're wasting that rep. Mm -hmm. I, as I said before, I live my life explaining to people, the more reps you do, I don't care if it's playing football, basketball, lifting weights, uh, being a camera person, the more reps you do at something, you will become very, very good at it. But those reps have to be proper. If you're doing them, uh, if you're just doing them, doing them incorrectly, mm -hmm. then you're going to be accomplishing nothing towards that goal. Smashing the plates, <clears throat> excuse me, all kidding aside, not only are you wasting your time, but you are going to hurt yourself at some particular moment. And just the other common sense thing, if somebody's around you, I've, I've told people, just be considerate to the people around you. You, you chuck one of these plates around and it, and it hits yeah. them in their leg, well, you know, you're going to break something. In, in your book you write, uh, the greatest force in the gym is the release of hidden reps. Reps concealed during years of underachieving. The soul of a lifter is a coach, a mentor with a master key that can unlock the sturdiest cage and release concealed reps. For me, after reading your book when I'm in the gym, now I have Gino, Coach Gino in my head, awesome. that's great. <laughs> you know, barking at me in the nicest yes, way, but pushing great. me to, and you know, I'm fatigued, and I'm like, there's no way I can lift one more, but I can, I, I sense your presence now, you can do it, you Thank can, you. don't quit, don't Thank quit, you. and now I can understand what you mean about the, uh, the hidden reps. I'll give you an example of hidden reps. 2006, I was coaching a college team that my wife and I were funding through the gym, we we're the only Canadian uh, college team playing in the United States. A 225-pound two, bench press is the, is the off-season measurement to help people get recruited to the next level. 225-pound squats, like how many times you can do it. It's a, it's a significant measure, but you're, 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 it, it reveals everything about you. How many reps you've invested, what you've done in the off-season. Anyhow, I'll never forget, but it's more than once. Uh, a very strong young man who had all the potential in the world said, Coach, I can only do eight. I said, no, you can't. That, that's ridiculous. You, you, I, and, and I always use my own experience. I said, when I, when I was in my teens, I was doing close to 15. My, my own personal best is 26 mm -hmm. at a body weight of, of 190. I don't say that to brag. I say, if I can do it, you can do it. Anyhow, I can only do eight. I can only do eight. I said, we're going to sit down. We're going to do them with me. I'm not kidding you. He did 16. Nice. That's the perfect example. I didn't do anything. I, you know what I did? I told him, you're going to do them. Yeah. You're going to do them. I stood there with him. That's the hidden reps. Somehow he convinced himself. I mean, the whole psychology of lifting and athletics is very complex. But sometimes you can boil it down to this. If you're going to convince yourself that all I can do is eight and, and I need some, some, uh, some miracle supplement or some mm -hmm. overnight success. No, you hid them. You didn't, re you didn't uh, release your full potential. See this word potential? Wasted potential is probably the biggest heartbreak that I have suffered in coaching football or coaching in the gym because it, it, it's what life is about. Mm -hmm. Like we all have how an enormous amount of potential. How do people access their inner Gino, their inner coach to help them lift? What would you say to people? It's, I would say this. It's not what you want. It's what you do, what you do not want. So for example, your biggest fear, my biggest fear, I am never, ever, ever, not in this lifetime, am I going to go back to being a 12-year-old obese dysfunctional kid and have people judge me on that. It's not what I want. I don't want to be a bodybuilder. That's for other people with those goals. I don't want to enter into any competition. I do not want to return back to my worst nightmare. That's the biggest motivator to release your inner soul of the lifter. The thing that you don't want the most will motivate you the most. See, there's a, I call it the law of survival. A long time ago I learned in policing one simple line. Eliminate the worst case scenario. You go on a call, uh, you're in an investigation, it doesn't matter, football, eliminate the worst case scenario, I guarantee you, you figure the worst, F figure out the worst that can happen, mm -hmm. and in my case, it's, I just do not want to return back to obesity, figure out the worst, and figure out a way to eliminate it, there's your motivation, think of the alternative. Okay, let's get into your policing for a minute, because in your book, you say that um, steroids are for cowards, and you follow that up with a very interesting um, police investigation. It was one of the last, one of your last investigations. I'm very emphatic about, uh, about steroids and, and the reason I use, uh, I use that strenuous language is simply this. I don't tell my players don't do drugs. I don't use uh, the, the conventional language. I simply use real life cases and in my book the opening chapter has to do with the very last sudden death that I 
that I uh, investigated, every sudden death you have to classify it either as a homicide or a suicide or an accident. This was a, 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 a person that 10 years earlier I saw in the gym and I couldn't figure out how this guy had 180 pounds, how is he benching, he's the only person I've ever seen with my own eyes bench over 400 pounds. I spotted wow. him. He was about 10 years older than me, it was my first year in policing, I got hired when I was 18. Anyhow, I saw him do 400 pounds. I was very naive and I said, holy man, that guy's pretty strong. No, it was steroids. My last sudden death investigation, they found him slumped over in his basement, and the autopsy, I can't get into graphic detail, it was steroid ravaged insights. He was a 40-year-old man with an 80-year-old body inside, died at the age of 40 of heart failure. All because of steroids. That was what the pathologist, that's not my, that's not my conclusion. The pathologist told me steroids. That's just one. And I tell people, that's the consequence. That's, that's not just a one in a million. That's not lottery odds. Those are the consequences. And then we're all, we all got free will. You have to make those, those decisions yourself. But if you're going to be playing football, you're going to be playing on my team, we're not going to be tilting the, the, the playing field. Because if you want to cheat, you're cheating yourself and saying, well, why am I playing this sport? If I need a shortcut, then what am I doing? Why all this bravado about how tough I am? Well, if you're really that tough, you don't need any of the stuff to be cheating your way through it. Well, well said, Gino. We'll be back more on Health Matters. Gino's daughter is going to join us. Stick around. Welcome back to Health Matters. If you're just joining us, our topic tonight is working out. Here's your poll question. When it comes to working out, what's your favorite activity? A, cardiovascular, B, weight training, or C, stretching? Let us know, rogerstv.com slash healthmatters. So, so far I have been sitting with gym owner Gino Accaro, and now his lovely daughter Lee Ann is joining us. She is a personal trainer, boot camp instructor, and a gym manager. Welcome, Leanne. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we have dad and daughter, right? You're both in the same industry. Yes. Yeah. Time warming. <laughs> <laughs> who trained who? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, Leanne, you work with women. Yes. That's your main primarily. Primarily. Yes. Okay. So, and um, you work with pregnant women. I understand. I do have some pregnant women in my boot camp right now. I work with a lot of women post-pregnancy as well. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest challenges that women, um, pregnant or not, really face when it comes to working out? Um, I would say primarily with the uh, age group that I'm working with um, is time. A lot of women are already have children, one child, and they're having another on the way, or and time is a factor, um, and that also nutrition, but that plays into time as well. Because sometimes uh, the, the quicker choice of food isn't the ne most necessarily the healthiest. Right. So what do you do in your boot camp for women? Like, what are some of the exercises that you do? Uh, well, I focus a lot on um, multi-jointed exercises, multi-muscle exercises. So, for example, a squat that also incorporates a bicep curl. Mm -hmm. um, or core work that also would incorporate some chest work. Okay, let's back up and talk about squats. Sure. For a moment. Um, my hairdresser just did a 30 day squat challenge. I don't oh, know if you've heard of that. I'm seeing <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you start off with 50 squats, and then the next day it's like 60, and then 75, and then you take a break, and then by day uh, 30, it's supposed to be like 220 squats. And she yes. said her legs were just. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, speaking of squats, in your book, um, I really finally understood why your gym is called X Fitness because in your book you say there's two types of bodies, right? Do you want to explain this part? I always say very simply there's a Y body and there's an X body. Yeah. And a Y body is a V-shaped upper body with these um, sort of like the stick appearance yeah. down at the bottom. Yeah. And those are those bulky it's, people. It's a neglect of the lower body. Yeah, and I see that a lot at the gym, again, going back to guys being bulky on top and then just the, the toothpicks for the legs. I mean, what's up with that, Gino? See, I think it's two reasons. Number one, there is its fixation. It's, it's, the, it's the generational thing. It's been passed down. Yeah. Upper body, go to the beach, V-shape. And the other thing, um, I'm going to be point blank about it. Squats are hard work. Yeah. They're not this sexy, glamorous exercise. But it's wrong. It, it, it's just a mindset. You see, I started doing them when I, when I was 12. When you really truly understand squats, you will love it. It's a love-hate relationship. So the X body. It. The X body is a powerful two-stem. Uh, uh, it's a V shape on top, on top of two 
exactly yeah. right. Two powerful pillars underneath. Yeah. So, and, the, and the sport that I coach, and any sport, here's where all your power is. Tackling, walking, running, speed, your speed development. Everything is lower body. Of course you need a big upper body. You need body armor. You need you need the, the big lats and the big arms. You need the big chest. Neglecting this, yeah, you're not happy. It just looks funny. Well, it looks it odd. It, it really, does. really does. Um, when I was at your dad's gym, or at both your gym, uh, I was auditing your, your boot camp class, yeah. and I really appreciate the fact that you were working on the X position with <laughs> your clients. I mean, you had them doing squats and lifting weights at the same time. That's right. So working both the upper That's and right. lower body. Absolutely. Balance is key. For sure. Yeah, nice. Yeah, she she's learned. Um, There's a, did you teach her that, or did you learn? Oh, that? she learned the oh. hard oh. way. <laughs> intended. But How many I, squats do you do a day? Uh, it depends. When I'm not in my pregnant state, I would say I'm up to 500 or a combination of squats and lunges. Well, you, in my yeah. classes, not not on my own. You have an amazing body, and, and I wish our photos were working this <laughs> evening because there was, we have an amazing photo of you in a bathing suit showing, um, you know, your abs, your rectus abs, your transverse abs, your inner and your outer uh, obliques, and I was just like, wow, like oh. I just totally admire your Thank stomach. You. Like, it was just amazing, and I just want to say, like, some of your accomplishments here, the um, Burlington Double Crown 5 and 8K in 2009, you were the third female overall. Right, Niagara Falls International 5K in 2009. You were the first in the age category, and yeah, in Crystal Beach 5K 2009, you're the second in age category. Oh, thank you. So, you yes. Like you practice what you preach, and that's you what I like about your family. I mean, you guys are so real. Your gym yes. is so raw, so hardcore. Yes. Right. I mean, you really work it. Blue collar gym. gym. We live it. We live it. We surely do. Yeah, and we love it. That's that's what I appreciate. Yeah. Grassroots level. That's that's what that's what the core principle. No pun intended. That's what the core principle of our gym is is about. It's about a blue collar environment that we try to tell you this is real. There's real results, but you got to invest in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Have, so have you read your dad's book, Soul of the Lifter? I haven't read it from cover to cover <laughs> because I live it. I know so many of the stories and yeah. and. Uh, I don't That's great. Great endorsement. Yeah, I, I, I can't get my family yeah, to read my own yeah, book. Yeah, don't get your family to endorse no. you. I've learned that no. too. No, it just can't doesn't work that way. So listen, I pulled some um, quotes from your dad's book, sure. and I'm going to ask you if you'd like to read them. They're about the gym. So we're talking when we're sure. talking about the gym. So if you could just read those. Sure. It's my little ode to the gym. Okay. From Soul of Lifter. The gym is a place that guarantees a life-altering experience each time if you choose it. The gym will not make anything happen without your consent. The, the gym needs your cooperation. The gym is a magical place where the miracle of transformation ha happens before your eyes, day after day, if you make the call, if you make the decision to make it happen. The gym never fails to teach us. It takes no days off. It won't cancel a class, take a vacation, or use up a mental health day. The gym does not intend to punish. It strives to reward. The gym was invented to cure all pains, the pain of being physically and emotionally unfit. The gym is a place of pain conversion, pain transformation, where the pain melts away like excess fat. Yeah, brilliant words. Thank you. By my man Gino here. And when I read that, like like those quotes were scattered throughout your book, and so yes. I pulled them together. And I have to tell you, I, I actually almost came to tears. And I'll tell you why, because... I'm almost I, going to come to tears because I, you said that. I've been going to the gym since I was 14 years old, because mm -hmm. my sister actually got me into exercising, and I'm 38 now, and I've, every year I've you always had it. a gym... I've always had a gym membership. The gym, to me, is, a, is my rock. It's mm -hmm. my stability. It's always been there mm -hmm. for me. It's a place where I can work things out. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't realize, like how much or how important it really was to to my life until I read your book and I was like Thank wow you. I was so grateful for this place called the gym it, I mean I, could, I, would, I wouldn't live without it it's my best friend it, it's, yeah. a, it's yeah. truly a magical place and I'll tell you why you know we've all you know, we're all in workplaces we all suffer stress we all like life is stress the whole thing about the gym and I started like I said in 1969 at the age of 12 that gym is a it's a sanctuary. I was it's, just gonna say it's a yeah, sanctuary okay. where you make you make this experience. And I can honestly say, uh, I, I don't like to be rude to people, but when I'm in there, I got my iPod on. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk to you. I haven't got time for this. This is it's my time. It's not selfish. This it is, is selfish because I'm like that too, right, and it is selfish. Right. It, yeah, it's and a, it's okay to be selfish, I, and I think that's the message. It, it's it, okay. It, to be I selfish. always kind of say that here's the paradox. I, it is. It's a departure from reality, but it's my reality. It's yeah. your reality. And I always talk about the, it's your polygraph test, it's a lie detector test. 
In other words, all the excuses that you make, like for example, I've heard everything from players. Oh, coach, I can't work out in the offseason because of this. I can't work out because of that. I can't work out because I've got kids. Well, I've got three kids. We've all got lives. But please, you know, you got to tone down the excuses because the excuses are what, especially using other people as excuses. That's great. I'm glad you brought in excuses. So you have um, YouTube videos. Yes, posted, and, and, I, and I've watched your videos and they're very motivational. Thank so you. this is something that I pulled from your YouTube videos from the psychology of working out. Would you mind? Sure. Okay, that's great. I'm glad you came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, from the psychology this of working out. This is your dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, coach. Coach. Uh, coach, sorry. I love to work out, but I got to miss a, work, a week of working out because fill in the blank. What does that have to do with the psychology of working out? Lots. Working out can be in the gym, on the field, wherever. If you love to do something, which I have heard a million times, coach, I love football, but coach, I love working out, man. I live for working out. No, you don't. If you live for working out, you will need it desperately, and when you need it desperately, it will bug the piss out of you <laughs> to miss it. So, okay, that's from you. Um, before you use comment, I just want to yes. comment on one thing about excuses people make. Um, I do life coaching. One of the mm -hmm. life coaches that I follow, she's in New York. Her name is uh, Lauren Zander. She's um, coaches, executives. Um, and she says there's three voices within us that make excuses. One she calls the chicken voice, right? So that's the chicken who says, you know, oh, I'm too fat. I can't go to the gym. People are going to laugh at me. Right, so mm -hmm. there's your excuse. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I have to cook dinner for my husband tonight, so I uh, can't go to the gym. Okay, so that's a chicken, either uh, fear or blame. Mm -hmm. The other inner voice is the inner brat, the part of us that has like that bad attitude that would rather say, oh, I'm gonna just sit on the couch and eat potato chips tonight, why bother? Mm -hmm. And then we have the inner weather reporter who can't control anything, because the weather reporter just reports on the weather. Oh, it's raining, can't, I'm big boned, I can't do anything Good about enough. it. Good enough. Okay, so, so for people, really, it's really important to peg these excuses that come up through our dialogues with ourselves and really to nab it in the butt. So what would you say to people with excuses? How do you motivate them? See, excuses to me, are they're wired up. Yeah. We all do it. We all make excuses. You to unwire them, you either need someone to coach you out of them, but it's got to take one excuse. It's like really one rep at a time. In other words, if you need to go to work on today and you say, oh, you know what, my, my shoulder hurts, my back hurts, uh, my kids, my job, if you just break that habit today, once, yeah. then tomorrow, then tomorrow, then tomorrow, it's a dialogue that you have with yourself. Willpower doesn't happen overnight, but willpower is uh, a, it's a self-generated performance demand that you yourself either get a coach or do it yourself and say, today, I'm not going to make that excuse. Then tomorrow, you don't make that same excuse. Then the next day, and it becomes wired up. Mm -hmm. You unwire, then you yeah. wire up that. What I hear from you and also in your book, um, the psychology of working out is more important than the physiology of working out. Hands down. Right? What do you think, like, what do you tell women or pregnant women, I mean, how do you motivate them? Um, I think most of the time people are looking for guidance as motivation, mm -hmm. from what I encounter. Uh, they want a solid plan, and by offering that to them, they in turn become motivated because they can see their journey starting, and the path to follow. Yeah. Now, being pregnant, I mean, how long can you work out, work out until? Uh, with your doctor's clearance, if all is well, you could work out until the day you deliver. Um, there are certain modifications that you have to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like I said, I would always check with your doctor first. Mm -hmm. How do you motivate yourself to work out? Because there's dreary days. There's days I, I, I even have where I just, oh, but I go. And I, and I go because I know I'm going to feel good. Motivate myself. I have an awesome coach. Um, so I love working out. I have to say it's a learned behavior. So it's through building habits. Um, but yeah, knowing that you will feel fantastic and what you're doing for yourself long term, that's my motivation. That's your motivation. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, hey, Gino and Leanne, it's been a real pleasure, sir. I'm going nice. back to your gym. To learn more. I can't wait for you to I gotta get back. ripped. I want those abs out. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. We'll be thank back more on thank health you. matters looking at older adult fitness with Jennifer Thomas. Stay tuned. <laughs>
back to health matters so far on the show we have been looking at working out for men lifting um, we touched upon childhood obesity a little bit um, boot camp for pregnant women now my next guest helps people who are older she's an older adult fitness specialist please welcome Jennifer Thomas hi Jennifer hi Jacqueline welcome back you were on the show Thanks. with me last year and I just I love your energy I think you're fantastic and I just your knowledge is incredible so thanks for being here yeah. tonight happy to be here it's great yeah, yeah. And you're from Brampton, so you're I just am. down the road. I'm local. You're, yeah. you're a local. I'm local so we love locals. Okay. Well, I mean, you just filled the table in a matter of seconds with uh, all these goodies. So take me through this. What, okay. What's going on? Well, what I really wanted to touch on today was balance training. Okay. So, and what that is essentially is literally what it sounds like. You're just, there's specific exercises that help you with your balance. And as an older adult, that's a really, really important thing mm -hmm. just to, for fall prevention, for independent living, for all sorts of stuff. So, Essentially what all this is um, are little tools for balance training. Okay. So neat little thing to test first, because first of all, you, it's kind of nice to find out if you need balance yeah. training. Yeah. So a neat little trick to do is to make sure you're in a nice, you know, comfortable area where you're not going to fall over and bump your, bump your head, but is to, just to put your feet, you know, one in front of the other so you're heel to toe. Mm -hmm. So have, you know, either have a friend or your spouse time it or yourself. and. For thir try to shut your eyes and see how long you can stand there mm -hmm. without falling over. Okay. So as a good baseline, so if you yeah, can do it, the average. I was going to say if you can do it for 35 to 40 seconds okay. or more, sure. you're doing well. Okay. But if you can't, then that's where I'd start someone from like a progressive standpoint because you really need to build that up yeah. um, through as you know as you get yeah, a bit so older. Show me. I mean, how do you how do you build that up? Okay. So if if you were less than 30 seconds, I'd be starting you right on the on the ground. So. You can start by trying to stand on one foot. I mean, it really goes back to when you were a kid. Um, Learning how to walk all well, over Well, no. Remember we used to sort of, you know, you'd see how long you could jump on one foot or yeah. how far could you walk along the edge of the yeah. sidewalk without yeah. falling off. That was all balance training. But you didn't know it was well, balance training. Why is it important to do balance training? Like, why would I need to balance training? Well, you know what? Even athletes. I, you'd be hard-pressed to find an athlete that doesn't have some element of balance training in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it touches a little bit on what something, it's kind of a big word, but it's called proprioception. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that is how your body um, relates in space, how it, mm -hmm. how it interprets. So it uses um, environmental feedback, cues from the bottom of your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, visual cues, all sorts of things, and that's telling your body whether to activate or deactivate certain muscles to keep you in balance. So, I mean, sitting in a chair or reaching up to, to grab something or riding a bike, all of those things kind of have to work together in order to keep you balanced. Mm -hmm. So, as you age, one or more of these elements can, sure. can sort of decrease. And for older adults, mm -hmm. uh, it's really important because mm -hmm. of the fear of falling, sure. which is a huge one. Um, so what sort of things? So we talked about how you'd start. So if you're, you know, mm -hmm. just gradually increase the amount of time you can stand in one foot, mm -hmm. then you progress by, you know, closing your eyes or that kind of thing. If you get to the point where you're 45 seconds, you're doing pretty well. That's when the fun little toys oh, come in. I have never really timed it, but it's well, it's definitely over a minute. Okay. So okay. yeah, okay. It, it. But as you get older, okay. it happens. So these, <laughs> it's it interesting. I get a little interesting they're comments. Like a cactus. They are. But they're squishy. They're called balance pods. You're supposed to step on those. Yeah. So what you and do? Then you your feet. What you, you've got shoes on, so you don't really feel the the prickly part. But the nice thing is they're both individualized, so you can put them, spread them as wide as you like. Because mm -hmm. obviously, the the wider your feet are apart, the stronger balance you have, or stronger sure. base. Um, but everything has to kind of work. So you've got all your core muscles firing because you're unbalanced because they're yeah. they're squishy. So, but you can, as you get better, you gradually put them closer together. Um, you can add... Are you supposed to lift weights? I was going to say, Leanne, touch on that, where you're trying to do compound exercises. Yeah. Once you've got your balance a you little better... get the X-body. That's it. the whole point of the show, get the yeah. X-body. So you can do, you can be doing biceps, you can be doing shoulder presses. If you want even more, flip them over. Oh, right. that's tricky, Jen. And you're like, yeah. oh, it's tricky, but it's yeah. fun. Do you I mean, know I do, and the yeah. kids love it. It's yeah. great. It's great for kids. Yeah. Because um, I would go from here and then I probably bossy, progress. That's the bossy ball? Yes. I see um, people at the gym doing the uh, pec fly, standing yep. on that. Yep. So yeah. you can do pec flies, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's not just for balance training, but again, you get comfortable on it, go on one foot, go on the other foot. Um, and then when you're really challenged, you can flip it on. So same thing. Uh -huh. 
So it's almost like you're surfing because you're going to flip this guy over. Yeah. And again, you can be doing you can be doing bicep curls, you can be doing tricep kickbacks, all while standing on this really uneven surface. It's great for your core. Yeah. Okay. What else did you bring? What did, um, so what all this you? stuff again. So it's we're talking about balance training, yeah. but we're also talking about resistance training. Okay. Um, what are you going to do with this? What? <laughs> well, you're scaring me, Jen. <laughs> I'm not going to flip you, I promise. <laughs> so these are great for, I mean, they come in different resistances, okay. but oh, especially for beginner, yeah. Oh, that feels good. So beginner yeah. exerciser, you can do, you know, you can do some Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far. I know. Right? But you can do tricep kickbacks where you've got, you know, you're holding you, on. Can you stretch this before it actually before I mean, it breaks? I stretch them pretty, pretty far. Yeah. Um, and they come in stronger strengths so you can really oh, increase I the resistance. Really feel that. Yeah. I like that. It is. Yeah. And there's lots of things. You can tie it in a knot so you're making a nice circle. Yeah. So, and then you can use this as, um, you just sort of loop it around the chair, the, the leg of a chair. So you've got one foot in here. So this is my foot. Section? Yeah, so particularly, again, you're, you're talking about older adults, mm -hmm. so you've got hip mobility issues, lower body is huge, because um, mm -hmm. one of the greatest falls are on stairs, up and down, because as you get older, mm -hmm. there's something called sarcopenia, which mm -hmm. is loss of muscle mass. Yeah, and if you're so, not working out, if you're not exercising, your, your, you use your bone density it. is going to decrease, so yep. this is really important, it and is it's really cheap, important. right? For these are exceptionally cheap, and even these bands, same thing, you can stand on the bottom of a band, do some, some bicep curls, you have so much versatility with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say, though, is if you're starting out and you want to put together your own little gym. Mm -hmm. This is the home gym. This is, but mm -hmm. find some somebody that knows what they're doing, um, that's got some certification, that preferably has some kind of older adult specialization. I was going to ask you about that because it's important, I would yeah. imagine, for an older person to have a spotter. Spotter is good and just learning proper form from the very beginning because mm -hmm. muscle memory is a crazy thing. If you start doing something wrong from the beginning, you're going to keep on doing it wrong. And, and they're talking about proper squats. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many, you know, those, uh, you're probably too young for the 20 minute workout, but you watch them do all their really fast squats and their knees are over their toes. And, you know, I watched my sister do the 20 minute workout and she would do that twice a day. Oh, and that's why I was young <laughs> and she's six years older than me. And that's what motivated me to work out. So yeah. working out has been imprinted in my mind since I was like gay high. Yeah, the well, 20 minute workout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, was, it was quick. Yeah. It was easy, but form was not always the best. So yeah. that's a big thing because I mean, falls are a real, um, a real problem for, for seniors. One in sure. one in three adults over the age of 65 falls every year. So, and ha over half of those don't even, you know, talk to their doctor about that fall, whether they're embarrassed mm -hmm. or, you know, it really wasn't so bad. Yeah. Um, but just, it doesn't lead to chronic injury. And right? we're just speaking of stats. Um, Worldwide, one out of ten people die prematurely um, from a lack of exercise. Yep. So it's really important. Well, there's because there's actually a study that was for normal weight people. If you exercise, it was just a minimum of twenty to twenty-five minutes a day, and that's just moderate activity. Yeah. You, they actually found that their longevity was up by seven. I think it was seven point two years. <laughs> and even those that were overweight yeah. and bordering on obese, their life expectancy even went up by three point nine years. Yeah, I think you know um, it goes back to you have to want to live, and you have to want to live a good quality of life, mm -hmm. right? Oh, for sure. And, and working out really um, is an it's about self love. Uh, uh, you know. Life coaches always say that one of the areas they start with with the person is for them to make a promise um, about their body. Because if you ca if you can't control your your promises to your body, how are you gonna you know make promises to other people outside of that if you can't have personal integrity with yourself? Yeah. You know? Well, and I think it ha it also comes down to your why. I mean, why are you doing this? I mean, sure, you'll you'll lower your blood blood pressure and your stress levels will go down. You'll you'll sleep better. You'll you'll have better digestion. All these things are great, but. What do you, why are you doing this? Is it for you? Do you want to watch your grandchildren grow up? Do you want to be there? Do you want to have, there's one thing. Do you want to have balance in yeah. your life? Do you want to live long or do you want to live long and healthy? Yeah. Right? I mean, personally, I don't want to be 90 and, in a and confined to a wheelchair. I want to be living right through. Mm -hmm. So, and that's part of it. It is that true use it or lose it, mm -hmm. um, particularly with muscle atrophy, right? It's just, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. So um, that's right. a big thing. 
What is this tool? So these are again, it's just it's a it's, oh, it's a another firmer, resistance. It's another resistance band, yeah. um, but it's a little more gentle because it actually has some cushion to it. But so where can so, people get this type of equipment? Um, the fitness source used to be a great one, but then it went out of business because apparently there weren't enough people in Brampton buying things. So it's it's owned and operated by Canadian Tire. So I suspect okay. a lot of this stuff you can still get mm -hmm. um, at Canadian Tire. But my big thing is just find something you love to do. It doesn't you don't ha it doesn't have to be a gym. I love going to the gym, mm -hmm. but that may not be something right. for everybody. Yeah. So whether it's especially as you get older. You know, a Pilates class or you know, Aquafit, something like that. You know what's great is that this is great to bring when you're traveling. Oh, absolutely. Right, you can pack this in your suitcase. It doesn't weigh it down, and you can travel when you're abroad. So that's really great. Um, you've suffered many injuries in your life, <laughs> and, have, and you've yeah. bounced back and have continued to work out and to inspire other people to work out. I mean, where does that come from? Well, I mean, I was a. I mean, any sport you could put me in as a kid, I was in it. Basketball, soccer, baseball. So, I mean, I've always had a love of all things sport. Mm -hmm. um, I was much like you, a gym rat at about the age of, you know, 15, 16. And then it was oh, about eight, nine years ago, my back was so bad, I ended up having major spinal surgery. And I've had new, two knee surgeries because of skiing incidents. So, my, my advice to anybody is that if, again, what they were saying, if, if I can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a question of progressing, you know, going with your what your weaknesses are, but progressing properly and slowly and with somebody who's knowledgeable about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's key. Yeah. So. You say on your website that exercise is a bit like brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. You need to make time for it every day. I love that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And it is true and it's funny because I get that, well, I don't have time. But here's a question for you. If I was to say, I'll give you $50,000 mm -hmm. if you commit to this exercise regime. And if you can answer yes really quickly, mm -hmm. then you can make time. You can fit it in, right? Because obviously if it's important enough to you and it comes back to that why. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to do this? Sure, weight loss is a great little thing. It's a nice added bonus. But it's a question about being strong and capable and living independently for a very, very long time. Nice. And being there for your family and your friends, right? Yeah. Because my family is everything to me. Well, so. that's the thing. When you work out, then your relationship with yourself improves and your relationship with other people improves, yeah. right? Well, and you're a role model for your family. Yeah. And my kids work out with us, and my husband works out with me. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Nice, yeah. Jane. You know what? Thanks so much for being here again. I. <laughs> you know, it was so short. It was short but know. sweet. It was short but you. sweet. Thank yes, you so much. Come back enjoy. anytime and uh, continue to inspire people. Thank you so much for joining us today on Health Matters. Here's a final tip from you for you from fitness guru Jackie Warner. It's not how long you work out; it's how strong you work out. Hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Have a fantastic evening.